the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. My favorite time of year to do canning is in the winter time. I guess it's because life has kind of slowed down a little bit. You know, about January and February, the weather outside's a little bit rough. Can't really get out there and do much. But you can stay inside and get a lot of canning done. And that's a good time to start canning meat, soups, stews, to put in your pantry. Summertime, we are so busy with the garden and so many outdoor chores and um, it's just a busy, busy time, spring, summer, and fall. And it just seems like trying to get the cannon done and keep up all that, it's just almost impossible sometimes. So that's why I love winter canning. We're gonna be canning some meat. Um, I think the only meat I really have in my pantry right now is ham. And um, one of the meats that I absolutely love to can and have on hand is chicken or turkey. Because you can do so much with canned chicken and turkey. There's just so many recipes you can use for it. And I have a video and I'll put, I'm going to put my canning playlist down below in uh, my information box down below the video. And in that uh, playlist, there's a video of me canning, um, I think it's called Italian Beef Tips. And a lot of y'all made and canned that meat and y'all absolutely loved it. We loved it so much that it didn't last long on the shelf. In fact, we ate it last winter and I didn't put any more on the shelf. So, and I'm, I want to do that because I do have more stew meat outside and uh, also have uh, some roast, chuck roast, which chuck roast a lot of times, and it just depends in your area, is cheaper than buying stew meat. Uh, of course, we had uh, a cow process, so we do have several roast, and we did uh, have some stew meat cut up. So... Uh, Besides making stew, there's other things you can do with that stew meat and then roast. And today I'm going to be making some uh, brown gravy beef tips. And this is another versatile uh, thing to have in your pantry because you can serve this over rice, you can serve it over noodles, mashed potatoes, over a piece of toast or a biscuit if you want it to. And uh, there's not a whole lot of ingredients, but you can pretty much even make it your own. You can put your own seasoning stuff in it. But I'm going to show you the ingredients that we're going to put in my brown gravy beef tips. Let's talk about our ingredients. This right here is anywhere from five to maybe just a little over five pounds of uh, stew meat cut up roast. We've got six cups of uh, minced onion. I've got two pounds of uh, mushrooms. You can use any kind of mushrooms that you like. I've got four cups of beef broth, three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. I've got six cloves of garlic chopped up, three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. And uh, that's all we're gonna, the ingredients we're gonna put in to our canned beef tips. <clears throat> Gotta listen to my clock for a minute till it stops. 
Now I've got a pretty good sized stock pot here that I'm going to turn it on, turn my burner on. About medium heat. I'm going to use about three tablespoons of olive oil or you can use butter if you want to. In fact, the recipe calls for butter. And I'm just going to coat the bottom of my pot. So that's going to probably be a good three tablespoons of olive oil. So the first thing that I want to do is we are going to saute our onions. Now, since they're going to be processing, because we're, I'm going to be putting them in quart jars, they'll be processing for an hour and a half, 90 minutes. Your onions are cooked the rest of the way, so you don't have to really cook your onions to death. So I'm going to coat my onions real good. I've got my jars in my canner with three quarts of water in the bottom of my pressure canner. And uh, I'm just heating my jars up. I don't have a dishwasher. I know a lot of y'all, that's why y'all sterilize and keep your jars hot. I don't have a dishwasher, so I just keep mine hot in, inside my pressure canner in the water until I get ready to and this is going to be a hot pack, not a cold pack. So everything that I'm using will be hot. My ingredients and my jars will be hot. And the water in my canner will be hot. And that's what we call a hot pack. Okay, our onions are starting to sweat down a little bit. Now usually if I was cooking some kind of recipe, I'd put a little bit of salt in here with my onions while I was sauteing them. But I really don't want a lot of salt in this that I'm canning today. In fact, my beef broth is low sodium. And, uh, and I'm just putting two teaspoons in this whole thing. So when I, you know, when I open the can up to to thicken it with a little bit of cornstarch and slurry and uh, I'll taste it and if I see it needs a little bit more salt I'll add a little bit more salt to it. Y'all can probably see Mr. Brown in the background back here. <laughs> He's uh, looking at his computer. But we just got maybe one more minute on all these onions. You know I can I think I can remember the first Canon video I think, and I could be completely wrong, I was canning dry beans. I love to can my own beans. In fact, I've got a bunch of them put up right now that we need to get to eating before I can any more beans up. And I've had a lot of people that just couldn't understand why I'd want to can dry beans when, why not just store them in your pantry dry and keep them dry because they'll stay forever. Well, this is the thing. When I come in from work, or you come in off the homestead, and you're wanting to make a pot of chili, and if you're like me, I put three different kinds of beans in it. So you can either go to your pantry and, and buy the store-bought, which is fine. I still have store-bought in my pantry. Or you can go to your pantry and just grab whatever beans you're wanting that you put up yourself and you know there's no preservatives or nothing in them and put them in your chili. I don't have time to be cooking up three different kinds of dry beans for a pot of chili. If me and Mr. Brown come in and we want some pork chops and some brown beans, I can go over there and get me a jar of pinto beans that I've canned up, open them up, uh, a jar of field peas, uh, white beans, whatever. So to me, it's a necessity in my pantry. I watched uh, Heather over at the Needy Homesteader, and I'm thinking it was this week. <clears throat> she canned up a pantry full of beans. 
uh, dry bangs and uh, so she's going to have bangs for a long time and uh, that's just that's why we do it because we we use beans in a lot of different recipes and uh, it's just a good thing to do okay I really feel like my onions have sweated plenty so now that my onions are where I want them I'm going to put my meat in now Now, I didn't weigh this meat, but I knew about approximate what was in each package. And then there was um, there was a roast that I cut up. So, we're going to say five and a half pounds. And you can see why I'm wanting to use a big stock pot. I got this pot off Amazon a couple years ago, and it's one of my favorites. It, it, it's very, it conducts heat very well and just does a really good job. Now, what you're wanting to do is you're just wanting to brown your meat. You don't want to cook it through. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're just wanting to brown it up a little bit. Got a little bit of fat there. I ain't liking too much. I didn't trim that one too good. You want to trim as much of that fat off as you can. If you leave a little in there, it's not going to hurt it. Okay. I'm going to take my mixture of salt and pepper. I'm going to take about half of it and season my meat. And I'm going to save the other half for later. I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit. And get this to browning. So remember, don't cook this all the way through. We're just wanting to brown it. Our meat is a it's kind of a it's not cooked all the way through. I'm trying to explain it to you. It's kind of a beige color, still raw in the middle, but kind of browned on the outside. So, I'm done here. I'm done with that. So you got your onions and your stew meat. You can see that that stew meat with them onions already made a little bit of broth in there. So now what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to add our four cups of big broth. Our three tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Our six cloves of garlic. The rest of our salt and pepper. And then we're going to add our two pounds of mushrooms. Now these mushrooms, as they kind of cook down this, they're going to cook down. So it won't look that full once it cooks down here just a little bit, a little bit. Here just a little bit. And I'm just going to stir this up good. Now once I get this stirred up good, I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit. I'm going to let this come to just kind of a, a soft boil. I'm going to let it boil for about five minutes and then I'm going to turn it off. And then we'll start canning this beautiful meat up. Now 
And if you don't like mushrooms, leave mushrooms out. Put you some bell peppers in here if you want to. Okay. Let it come to a little boil and time it five minutes. Meanwhile, I've got my jars heating back here. I've got everything ready to start my canning. I sterilize my jars. Got them here in my canner in hot water. Wash my lids and my rings. My rings probably I haven't canned in a while, so I wash them up good. Put some vinegar here in my canner with my water, three quarts of water. And I'm not going to be using my Presto today. Y'all that have watched me can know that that's all I've ever used. That's what my grandma used. In fact, I had her old Presto canner until we moved from the farmhouse. And I don't know where it went from there. Danny's mom used a Presto. So they've been around a long time. But I've got a Denali. And that's what I'm going to be using today. I might talk about it here just a little bit. The difference, a little bit of difference in it in a Presto. I haven't broke down, bought me all American made or all American canner yet. I'm just not to that point yet because what I've got is just doing great and doing the job. So until it's not, then I'll put out the money probably if I have it. Okay, our meat has been at a good simmer for about five minutes. So we're going to get everything ready, get it over here, and start canning this up. Okay, I got my meat mixture over here, and I'm just going to pull out two jars, two jars at a time. Let's see what I've done with my jar lifter. My jar lifter. I've had this thing forever and a day. Like I said, I'm just going to do a couple jars at a time. This should make seven quarts. You can make it in pints if you want to make, you know, smaller amounts for just one person. But this right here is good. Good for two. So my meat mixture is still hot. My jars are hot. You want to leave about an inch head space. And I like to make sure that I've got plenty of broth in there. So this will make seven meals for me and Mr. Brown. And you won't thicken this till you open it up to, to serve it however you want to serve it. Because I can make beef stroganoff, I can make a beef pie, pot pie with it. Stew meat has become a high priced commodity, I guess. And they charge you so much just because they've cut it up for you. So a lot of times if you can find a chuck roast or some kind of a roast on sale and cut that up, it'll be just as good if not better and not as much per price per pound. Okay, that one needs just a little bit more. Inch head spice. Now 
Now I'm gonna wipe my rims. Well, first I'm gonna do bubble. And something else I couldn't find. I could not find my magnetic wand to lift my lids out of my water. It's been a while since I've canned and I just, I don't know what I've done with it. Okay. Got me some vinegar right here. I like to use vinegar to clean the around the rim. Make sure there's nothing on there so you'll get a good seal. So And I'm gonna put my rings on, finger tight. Jars are hot. And then I'll lift them back into the canner and get me a couple more jars out and I'll finish filling my jars up. Okay, this is my 23 quart Denali canner. <clears throat> and it's different than my Presto. You can see you start out with your weight right here. On my Presto, there's a steam valve right there. And you would let that come up and you'd let steam start coming out and you'd count 10 minutes. Then you'd put your weight on. This one's different. The vent's right over here. It's built in. Your weight is already on here from the very beginning. In fact, you can leave it on there even when you're washing it. Right here's your vent. It automatically vents itself 10 minutes and then it starts going to pressure. You'll watch it go up. This is a 10 pound weight and I'll watch it go up to 10, around 10, 11 um, pounds and then I'm going to adjust my fire to keep it between 10 and 11. And I'll do that for 90 minutes. If it was pints, it would be 75. Okay, I've got the heat adjusted where it's holding uh, right at 10, between 10 and 11 pounds, and that's where I want it. This, this canner is really quiet. Every once in a while, the weight, it'll get excited, and for one second, it'll do a little dance there, and then it'll, it'll calm down, but it's pretty quiet. So I'm counting down, hour, half. So now that we've made sure that the jars are sealed and everything's cooled down, we're going to use some hot sudsy water and we're going to wash our jars just to get any kind of residue or any kind of um, maybe some of the liquid siphoned out and got on your jars and your lids. Just get them good and cleaned up and get them ready to put them in the pantry. I even go back 
and wipe my jars off that are already in my pantry because they do get dusty. So you just rinse them off good. And dry them good. And they're ready to put in your pantry. It's a good thing. Well, we got our Canon project done, and I just got to tell you a little bit of secret. When I finally got these jars out of my canner last night, it was a little bit after 11 o'clock. So, and that's because I got started so late. So this is the next morning, but uh, I came in from work, uh, piddled around. We made supper, ate supper. I had to get everything ready. For the canning process so needless to say by the time I got done I let the pressure go I turned my my heat off under my canner let that pressure go completely down to zero and then even after that I always wait at least 20 to 30 minutes before I open the lid so that's why it was so late so anyways here's our finished project and I don't know why, but this does happen sometimes with your recipes. I ended up just getting six quarts. Now, I always get seven quarts. There has been times that I might get six quarts in a pint. For some reason, I only ended up with six quarts, which is okay because this is six meals in my pantry. And I've got enough uh, roast and some more stew meat that I can go ahead and uh, get them canned up too. I didn't want to do a huge canning process coming in from work. I like doing it this way because it doesn't stress me out. Uh, if I have time on the weekends, you know, I'll do a bigger canning. But if I can get six to seven quarts of, of meat in the pantry ever so often, that's a good deal. And I'm going to be doing some more canning in January and February. And uh, it's going to be mainly meat, probably. So if y'all are interested in that, uh, there'll be some more videos coming up. And I am going to put my Canon playlist down below in my description box. Now, there may have been one that maybe siphoned just a little, but not much. And there is a little bit of a fat cap on top. Not a whole lot, nothing to worry about. For me... That just makes it taste better. It gives it just a, a, a good taste. But I had trimmed off most of the fat. Um, so that was an hour and 30 minutes, 90 minutes for quarts, 75 for pints. Um, I think most of my meats I do can in quarts. I think my ham, my ham is in pints. And the reason for that is because sometimes you just want to take a pint out and make you some ham salad or put it in a little pot of beans or something. So if I needed more than a pint, I'd just take out two pints. Um, my chicken, I do in quarts. I may have done some in pints for some reason. Quarts is better because um, you, you have a good uh, broth in there. Um, I do have a canning video. and In fact, it was one of my first videos too of canning and it was uh, canning chicken or was it turkey? It was either chicken. I think it might have been turkey. And then I also did the broth on the same video. So it was a win-win situation on that. I had broth and I also had turkey put up in the pantry. You know, I was thinking about this. I went over to my pantry and I was looking at my jars and I thought, you know, I could open up a jar of this, which is my <clears throat> beef tips, 
and brown gravy. Remember, it's got mushrooms and the garlic and stuff in it. But I could open up a jar of this. I could open up a jar of my canned potatoes and a jar of my canned carrots. And I've got an instant big pot of stew right there. So you just can't go wrong with stuff like this. This is why they call me an ingredient canner <laughs> because I like to can... I don't do a lot of stews and soups, not that it's wrong or anything. I just don't do that. I'd rather go and just go through my pantry and get a, a jar of green beans, jar of potatoes, jar of meat, and make me a stew. Now, there's a lot of good recipes out there and a lot of good canners out there. Now, this, there is a canuary collaboration going on. Now, this video is not a part of that, not that I wouldn't care for it to be, but I'm not due to be uh, on that collaboration till I think the 27th of this month. And, um, but you need to go check that out. Uh, all you gotta do is just go to your search bar and type in uh, Canuary and you, they'll all come up. <clears throat> and you got a lot of ladies in that co uh, collaboration that are excellent canners. They have a lot of excellent um, recipes, canning recipes. Um, you even have some newbies on there probably that's not been canning very long. They're doing such a good job. But to a lot of y'all that watch me, um, y'all started with canning dry beans. And from there, y'all have just went full force. And I'm so glad. I've had people comment and say, Lori, I'm in my 70s and I've started back canning and I'm just loving it. And that just makes me so happy. So anyways, if you haven't seen any of the Canuary uh, videos, check them out. Let's see. We washed our jars. You've seen that after, uh, of course, this morning I've done that. <laughs> Took my rings off. All of my, every one of them sealed good. Um, and I washed my jars. Y'all heard me mention the needy uh, homesteader Heather. She is a big advocate to make sure that after you do your canning, especially with meats and stuff, really wash your jars good before you put them in your pantry shelf because there could have been siphoning a little bit or anything that could have got uh, any kind of residue or food on the outside of the jar or on your lids. Just wash them good with hot soapy water and rinse them good and dry them and put them on your shelf. And you won't have any incidents of maybe bacteria or anything on the outside of your jars. So we got this done, and I'm going to be doing more. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm leaving anything out. Um, like I said, the recipe should have made seven quarts. That does happen sometimes. You don't get all that you thought you should have had. Uh, the recipe, you can make the same recipe over and over, and it's, sometimes it's just going to be <laughs> end up different for some reason. But I am going to be canning more meat, and I'll bring y'all along with me. I'm going to be doing some chicken, and um, I'm thinking about doing some beef hash, too, to put in the pantry. And that will be a good uh, thing for Mr. Round to have for, like, uh, a breakfast or even for a, a supper, coming in and having eggs and, and uh, a good hash to go with it. So I hope y'all like this video. There's going to be more coming, of course. And... Um, Winter times are just a good time to start canning your meats and stuff. Like I said, you're, you got some downtime and uh, you can take your time with it because you're not so busy outside and everything. So if I have forgot anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I have. Um, yeah, it was pretty late by the time I got the process done. So my Denali canner, I've only used it this one time and just the the one time that I've used it, I think I'm gonna like it. Um, I'm not an affiliate with them. I don't get any money from from using it or showing y'all. But uh, I did buy it, and it's been sitting it's been sitting stored up in the box for probably I don't know half a year. <laughs> and uh, I've got my two Presto canners, and I could have done a double canning on this. I could double and triple this recipe. But, like I said, I just like to take it a little bit at a time because I've got extra time this winter and just start putting meat up on the shelf. 
So I hope y'all like this video. We'll see y'all in a couple days. Um, probably see Mr. Brown cooking with me. So y'all watch for them premieres that tell y'all that we got a video coming up. If you like us, please push that like button. Some people say, well, it's not working. It is. We see it and YouTube sees it. And that really helps us. If you haven't subscribed and you need help subscribing, I know a lot of y'all watch us on TV, uh, not on your phones or computer. If you have a phone or a computer, just go to it and subscribe to our channel. That helps us a lot. Uh, make sure, make sure that you click on that notification bell that says all that you, so you get all of our notifications. And uh, I have noticed with some of my subscriptions, I've noticed that I haven't been seeing any of the videos and I went back and I was unsubscribed. So it's happening to me too. So I had to go back and subscribe to these channels again and click that notification bell. We'll see y'all in a couple of days. Y'all stay warm. We got really cold weather coming in. God bless everybody and fill your pantries.